safety to the world. This is Stu Miniman. Thanks for watching The Cube. Hi, I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching The Cube. Live from San Francisco, it's The Cube. Covering Oracle Open World 2016. Brought to you by Oracle. Now, here's your host, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live at Oracle Open World 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the co-CEO of SiliconANGLE with Peter Burris, head of research for SiliconANGLE Media, as well as general manager of Wikibon Research. Our next guest, I'm excited to have back because he's a product guy and we love to go deep in the products. Cube alumni, Juan Luesa, senior vice president of database technologies, veteran of Oracle. Welcome back to The Cube, great to see you. Thanks, great to be here. Love talking to the product guys and development side because we get to go deep into the roadmap and, you, and we're going to try to get as much information out of you as possible, but you'll do your best to hold back like you did last year. Only kidding. I never hold back. <laughs> okay, you no. Must you must have didn't. me confused with somebody yeah, else. Okay, no, no. <laughs> Maybe that was Larry Ellison. Well, he hasn't been on yet. Larry, we'll get you uh, on. He's not so good at uh, holding back either. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we want him on. That's why they won't let him on, I think. That's, Larry would be yeah. too comfortable in the queue. No, in all seriousness, so joking aside, um, the hottest areas right now is in your wheelhouse. Engineered systems, which is going to be a real enabler for Oracle on the performance side, and as you make your own chips, and you get Spark and Exadata, well, all this other cool stuff. It's going to go faster, 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 lower cost, higher performance. Better but the security, database, better the availability. Security, I mean, yeah. amazing right. stuff. But the database is where the crown jewel is for Oracle, always has been. Before you put web logic on it, make it sticky, but now you get the cloud. The cloud is an environment for great opportunity for the database, business and other databases, some Oracle, non Oracle. What's going on with the database and the cloud? Can you take a minute to explain the current situation? Yeah, so that's a big question. <laughs> What's going on? So, do you want to start with database or you want to start with the Let's cloud? start with the database. What's going okay. on with the database and right. what does that mean for customers as it moves to the cloud? Yeah. So database, uh, we're, we're in the process of releasing our next big database release. We don't release database releases very often. It only really happens every few years. It's a very big deal. So what we're trying to do with our, with our next generation database is modernize the whole infrastructure. Adjust to a lot of the big transformations that are happening in the marketplace. So among those are things like big data. Where do we go with big data? So with our new generation database, we're making uh, big data and database work seamlessly together. So we have something called Big Data SQL, where you can query data regardless of whether it's in Hadoop, NoSQL, Oracle, it's completely transparent. So customers uh, no longer have these silos of information. Uh, another big thing in, in database is the data types are changing. So new generation wants JSON. It's called JSON, which is a new data format. It's what's used in JavaScript. So web developers develop in JavaScript. They represent data in JSON. And then they say, hey, I don't want to take my JSON data and convert it to relational data. It's a big pain. True. So one of the things we've done in our in our new generation 12C database, we said, hey, take that JSON, we'll put that directly in the database, we'll allow it to be queried, we'll make it highly available. Highly without secure. a schema, without any kind Nothing. of schema, just throw it in there, just throw it in there. That's right. That's right. So we've made it very simple for new age developers to use JSON with databases. So that's another really big thing that's happening in database. So tell us what, just let's double down on that for a second. JSON has been a big trend in uh, API-based systems. A lot of people using JSON endpoints for user experience, whether it's mobile or web. Very prevalent now, pretty much standard. Yes. How does that get rendered itself from, from a customer's perspective? Are you saying that Oracle will just onboard it into the database itself, or is it a, is it a separate product, or is it, I mean? Directly in the data, so we have native JSON directly in the data. We've essentially added JSON as a data type. We've added it to SQL, we have SQL extensions, you can access so JSON. So I can run can SQL queries it. on JSON. You can, exactly right, you can very simply write uh, G, uh, SQL queries on JSON. And what's the impact and, and of the customer? And all, all the stuff that comes with that. And right? what does that solve? What problem does that solve? It solves two problems. One is, uh, people like that data type, so new age developers, they're writing in JavaScript, they have JSON, 
and they just want to use it. Yeah. Like, so they don't have to convert. Which, by the way, everyone's running in right. JavaScript. That's right. That's the big web programming language. And the other big thing is unstructured data. So data that, that's not structured initially, that every piece of data has its own structure. So it's a representation for saying a dynamic, unstructured representation that's very standard in the industry. It's a little bit like XML used to be before. The JSON is kind of the new XML, yeah, the new true. age XML. Talk about the data lake concept because Hadoop as a, as a market uh, just didn't make it, right? I mean, it's out, Hadoop is out there, yes. yes. Spark is certainly re relevant because you have you know, the, that kind of uh, use case of in memory and faster uh, processing. But the real power is, is that that's a de batch oriented data set. Um, as things like Hadoop and Spark evolve, how does that relate to Oracle's product roadmap? Yeah, so we have our own uh, Hadoop as big data appliance where we run uh, a Cloudera-based Hadoop product. And what we're trying to do is make those work seamlessly with existing databases. So there's certain kinds of workloads and applications that Hadoop is really good for. You know, kind of a frivolous example is if you want to find cats in pictures, you're not going to do that with an Oracle database. So, you know, here's a billion pictures, find all the pictures that contain cats. Not a good application for Oracle, right? Uh, on the other hand, if you're if you're running you know analytic queries against relational data, that's perfect for Oracle. So we see that these technologies can coexist. So there's certain kinds of applications that are really good for the Hadoop kind of workload, and certain kinds of applications that are really good for relational. And what we need to do is make sure that these things work seamlessly. What's the together. glue between those two layers? Well, that's it. There's even more applications that are going to want to use both. That's right. That's right. That so we so how, what is the glue? everybody goes to both, right? Yeah. So what, what is that glue? Well, there's a number of glues that we built, which is one is called Big Data SQL. It's a query seamlessly across them. We also have connectors that let you move data seamlessly between them. Uh, so those, those are kind of the main glues between them. So one of the things that we've observed is that, uh, to John's point, uh, there's been a lot more downloads of Hadoop than we've seen go into production. Uh, it's become a very, very complex ecosystem. And it's got some limitations, batch oriented, et cetera. Um, the challenge that businesses have is as they try to run pilots around Hadoop is they find themselves piloting the hardware, Hadoop, the clusters, all the way up to the use case. Right. And a lot of the times they end up failing. How does something like the big data appliance facilitate piloting? Because it, it looks like it should reduce the complexity of the infrastructure and give people an opportunity to spend more time on the use case. Well, I mean, you got it exactly right, which is, you know, there's there's some people that are hobbyists, right? Like there's people that want to build their own log cabin. They want to cut their own trees, kind of build their own blanks, <laughs> and put together their log cabin. And that's kind of how, how Hadoop started. It was kind of the hobbyist model, right? And Hadoop has kind of moved to the next level. Now it's people that want to get stuff done. And it's like, you know, I don't want to chop trees. I, you know, I want to live in a, just give me a house, okay? Well, actually, it, I wouldn't say hobbyist. I mean, Yahoo had a need. They needed, yes. they needed log cabins. Right. <laughs> so they built, That's right. you know, but I mean, they, it was a right. use case. The web scaler guys right. needed an unstructured, right. but, but a lot of scalable. people were very much kind of into build your own. Okay. So right. now a lot of people want a solution. They're like, I, you know, I don't want to be building this. So that's where Big Data Plans comes in, because it's, it's a complete solution. It includes the hardware. It's been pre tuned, pre-optimized, it includes the Cloudera software, includes all our connectors, and it includes support for the whole thing, because that's the other part of it. When you, you know, when you put together your own house, who are you going to call when it leaks, right? Yeah. You're on your own when it leaks, right? If Oracle puts it together, we can support the entire stack when you have any kind of issue, any kind of problem. And that's the kind of stuff enterprises want. It's not it's not a hobby anymore once it becomes an enterprise. So product. given that given that we're in a big data universe right now where we've got use cases that are proliferating very fast and we have limited experience about them, uh, that the technologies underlying that are we're, we're deploying to build those use cases are also proliferating very fast. Is it going to be possible for the open source model that presumes download, try buy, not salespeople, not a lot of it, not a lot of learning, not a lot of hand holding, to make it possible to fix that whole thing or make it all come together? Or is a company like Oracle going to have to step in and take some responsibility for guiding how the market evolves? Yeah. So open source and Oracle can work together. I mean, we have Linux distributions. We we have, we own uh, MySQL. So Oracle and open source 
it, you're not at it, odds. It, that's right. Uh, we, in fact, we're one of the major open source companies in the world. But you know, like I said, real businesses aren't in it as a hobby. They, they want a solution. They're looking at this as a tool, and a lot of times they want somebody that can support it, that can basically ensure that it's going to work for them, and they have somebody they can call. It's not just, hey, I'm going to post a, uh, a message on a message board and hope that somebody responds, right? I mean, when you have, you know, airplanes in the air, when you have, you know, uh, dollars flying across the network, you need a solution. You need somebody you can call that you can guarantee is going to solve the problem. And also that can, that can ensure that the technology moves in the right direction, takes into, into account what users want, and that you know, a certain level of quality assurance and all that is built into it. So let's build on that. What, what do you, when you look at the future of database, what do you see? Well, there's, there's a lot of different things. So database is in a, a, a very big change. There's big changes happening in the database world right now. Uh, more than, than probably ever before. So I, I, you know, one thing we've been talking a lot about is this sort of big data Hadoop. Another thing is JSON. Another area is uh, in memory is a very big change that's happening in database. The whole moving into in memory into these different kinds of formats. Along with that, Oracle's pioneering moving database algorithms directly into the chips, into the chip technology to make it run dramatically faster, make it more available, make it uh, more secure. That's another big thing. Uh, building multi-tenancy directly into the database, that's another big area that Oracle's pioneering. Instead of having it kind of the cloudify the database directly natively inside the database. Uh, another big area that, we're, um, that we've been working on is uh, putting native sharding of databases directly into the database. Uh, uh, take uh, about data protection. Well, that's the multi-tenancy, right? So take, multi take me through the multi-tenancy a little bit. How is multi-tenancy inside the database going to work? Uh, well, okay, so that's what we call our, our multi-tenant database. So okay. a little bit like VMs. So VMs say, hey, uh, it looks like I have a physical machine, but in fact I have a fraction machine. It looks like looks to me like a, like a physical machine. In fact, it's a virtual machine. Okay. We're doing the same kind of thing with a database. So it looks like I have a physical database to the application, but in fact, you're sharing a database among many users. So what is the advantage of that? The advantage of that is we don't have one database, thousands of databases anymore. So many of our customers have deployed thousands of databases. It becomes a huge maintenance headache to, to have thousands of databases, especially in today's security world where you have to constantly patch and update these things. You can't just kind of leave them alone anymore. So, so by you having a, a small number of physical databases, lots of virtual databases, it completely saves costs, it's more agile, OpEx lower, CapEx lower. That's the new world of multi-tenant cloud databases. Got it. It's also trending with appliances, and I want to get your thoughts on last year, the, the big rage that I liked was this zero data loss. Recovery uh, appliance, yes. ZDLRA. That's right, you got um, it right. <laughs> what's the, up? I mean, no, very fascinating, yes. basically zero data it's cool loss. cool technology. Yes. So what is, it, is that still on the, out there? What's going on with that? Zero data loss recovery appliances are fast is growing appliance right now. It is? Yes, easily. Uh, uh, it's been very well received by the market. We have some of the biggest banks now running it, financial institutions, retailers. Uh, why? Because it's a very simple uh, value proposition, which is, hey, I want to protect my data in a way that it's constantly protected, I don't lose any data in a way that it's scalable, in a way that it offloads my, my production databases. So it's a very so simple solution. So that's a breach uh, saving situation, right? So like, the people who have these security breaches, is this where that fits? Where's the use case for ZDLRA? Uh, ZDLRA is not security, it's about availability. Okay, so if someone basically shuts the data center down. Right, if that database becomes region. corrupted, if there's some natural disaster, if there's a bomb, if there's whatever, is my data protected? Will I lose anything? Nobody can afford that's to lose data thing. anymore. In the old days, when you did a backup, you did a nightly backup, and then if something happened, you'd restore. Well, guess what? That doesn't work anymore. We're too dependent, so nobody wants to lose their airline records, nobody wants to lose their bank records, nobody wants to lose their retail records. You can't afford to lose data anymore. Okay, so I you need get a you. solution that's that zero data loss. I'm surprised you guys aren't, there's more, not more fanfare in the show about that. Uh, I was really impressed last year. I'm glad to hear it's doing yes, well. It's containers, doing well. database containers. Yes. This is something that we talked about a little bit last that's time. That's the same as multi-tenant. It's okay, kind of a that's different, the different terminology so. for that. All right, yeah. now cloud-based cloud -based databases. Now we'll yes. get to the cloud. Where yes. does all this go to the cloud? Okay, so, uh, you know, traditionally customers deployed on premises. What we're doing now is we're taking the Oracle database that we've developed for the last 40 years, it's the most sophisticated database in the world, and moving it onto the cloud. So what does a customer get? They get, they can provision it instantly. So they go onto our website, say, I want a database, here's the size, here's the number of CPUs I want, boom, they get it. Uh, they pay monthly instead of paying up front. They don't pay for the licenses, they just pay us a, a, a monthly fee. 
Uh, and then Oracle operates the whole thing. It's like, I don't want to manage it, I just want to use it, right? So that's the benefit of the cloud. I go somewhere, I need a database, I get it right away, I don't have to mess with it, and I pay monthly. So the Oracle, on your Oracle cloud, you would then deploy all those other goodness, ZDLRA, all the other all technology, stuff, yes. behind, the, behind the curtain, so yeah. to speak, was so we have, we have a range of offerings in our cloud. So we have a regular database service, uh, we call it enterprise service, and then we have the high-end service, the Exadata cloud service, right? That runs our Exadata technology, super fast, super available. And then we have something called Exadata Express, which is the lowest cost cloud database in the world. So we have, we have kind of three things, that, depending on, on what the customer wants. They want a smaller database for really low cost, they want a super mission critical high performance database or they kind of want something in the middle. So we, we span the whole range. And, and by the way, our high end is higher than anybody else. Our low end is lower cost than anybody else. So we span a, a bigger range than anyone else. You know, Juan, next year we're going to need an hour with you yes. to cover all the <laughs> It's a tech. lot of topics. No, you're, on a, you're a great guest yes. and you have a lot of experience and a lot of, we appreciate the insight. I'll give you the final word. I want to get one more uh, answer out of you because you're, you're awesome, sharing great, great insight. For the folks watching, what, what's the one thing, or one or two, three things they should know about Oracle Cloud, the technology, the database, the things going on at Oracle that they may not be, that may not be hearing about, could be the best selling thing, some things that, that's not on the mainstream yeah. press, press, press reporting. Well, you know, our Oracle Cloud is pretty simple. I mean, the, the main thing to understand is it's 100% compatible with, with databases on premises. So it's very easy to move workloads back and forth. That's the main thing. And the other thing is, we are we, we use the exact same infrastructure. So we've been developing, for example, our Exadata product, which is kind of the precursor to cloud. It's a very specialized database system run on premises, and now we're running that in the cloud. So again, the customer can get the exact same yeah. thing. And our latest offering is a Cloud at Customer. So we take those same cloud attributes and we can put That's them inside the, machine, the customer right? data. Yeah, so we have a cloud machine, an Exadata cloud machine, and a big yeah. data cloud. So the customer's got all the choices of Oracle. That's right. So the, so the customer the customer has full choice. They can move to the cloud if and when they want, at the speed they want. They can move back and forth. They can do disaster recovery in the cloud. They can do backup in the cloud. They can do development in the cloud. So all these range of offerings, all these range of choices are now the customers. So true or false, Larry Ellison's the master at the long game. Uh, Larry thinks long term, absolutely. <laughs> Of and course, he's, true. And, and <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, he's he's brilliant, and he's shown it over and over yeah, again. I agree. Yeah. Big fan. Uh, although yesterday's keynote, Larry could have done better, but he was too busy getting all those announcements out that he was mailing in at the end. There was so many announcements. It's hard these days oh, because my. Oracle. There's so much happening at Oracle. Yeah. There's so much happening at Oracle. Juan, thanks so much for spending your valuable time with us on the cube. Really appreciate it. Yeah. This is Silicon Angle Media's the cube. We go out to the events, extract the signals. I'm John Furrier, Juan Luis, senior vice president, database platform services, live in San Francisco. We'll be right back.